Hey there, Scipio here. In this video, I'm going to go over setting up the cyclic servos and the head setup on the Raptor E550 fly barless. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get our servos connected to our bell cranks through the linkages. And for that, we're also going to need to put our servo horns on. So I'm just going to do the cyclets this video, and I'll do the tail servo and setup on that in a separate video. But for now, what we need are the three cyclic servo horns, which are going to be the double arm style. So all of your horns and screws and nuts and uh, balls will all come in a little bag with the kit. So just get that out. So ideally you want your linkage rods to be parallel. So in order to figure out where to put the balls on the servo horns, I just measured the, uh, the connection points on the bell crank and then see which of the two balls closely uh, map to that. And so it looks like the second ones from the inside are where I'm going to put these balls. You can carefully widen out one side of the hole with an X-Acto knife. Don't take off very much material, but that'll help you get the screw started whenever you put your ball on. Putting a small magnet on your screwdriver really helps you uh, keep the screw in place while you try and uh, finagle how to get it in the hole. So these balls have two sides. One side has a little bit of lip and then the other side is flat. The side that's flat is going to go towards the screw head and then the side with the lip is going to go toward the servo horn. It's going to be a little bit of a standoff from the horn. Just like that. So then just screw your balls onto the horns, making sure it's on the opposite side of where the gear teeth are. You want them on the outside. And then I like to use a little toothpick to put some thread lock onto the screw uh, whenever I apply the nut. Uh, thread lock is not plastic friendly, so I try and keep it off as much as I can. I like to use this little tiny screwdriver also to help just position the nut and kind of index it until I can get it started. Uh, magnetically it holds it and I don't have to worry about dropping the thing uh, until I can get it started on the screw. Really does uh, make it easy for me. Alright, then just tighten down your nuts and uh, we're going to do this on all three of the arms. Two balls per arm. Oh, and another magnet tip, if you put a bunch of them on a screwdriver it makes a great search and rescue tool. So if you're working over a carpet like I usually do, it never fails that I lose a screw or a nut. I also use it to kind of clump things together on the table and keep them from rolling around. Anyway, back to the servo horns. We have one other challenge here, and that's the elevator servo is recessed into the frame. So the full-size servo horn doesn't fit in that area. So we're going to need to cut it down to fit. Since we know we're using the second holes uh, on, the, on the arms, we just need to be able to cut above that. So I'm going to cut it right at the third hole mark. Uh, don't cut it too close, um, but uh, you know, you can, you can trim it down, which will make plenty of room for it to move freely inside that little compartment. So here's what I ended up with. I just uh, used a uh, pair of side cutters and uh, I think a little bit of a sandpaper just to kind of trim it down. And here's what it looks like with the balls on. So there we go. We've got the, uh, the left and right and the uh, elevator. Now we need to get our horns on uh, with the servos in the center position. So to do that, we need to turn on our transmitter, power on the heli, get our uh, GT 5.2 fired up, and we're going to get it into programming mode. And we're going to go into the swash menu. And inside there, we'll have the uh, sub trim for elevator, aileron left, and aileron right. So what we want to do is get the horn uh, physically as close to centered as we can and 90 uh, or align directly up and down with a servo and then use a sub trim to fine tune it. And you can see here as I adjust that sub trim value, uh, it moves the servo arm. Now you may try flipping the servo horn or even swapping it on different servos to get that perfect fit while the sub trim is still at zero. Get it as close as you can physically and mechanically uh, and then again go in and fine tune it with the sub trim. But the less sub trim you use, the better in the end. And then this is kind of what you want it to look like when you've got it all ready to go. You're going to use the uh, center screw here. Don't forget to put some thread lock on that. Uh, it is a metal screw into a metal gear. And uh, get it in there and tighten down. And we're going to do this for all three of the cyclic servos. And as you can see here, when I tighten it, I like to use my finger to hold the servo horn so I'm not torquing against the servo motors. Make sure your transmitter is set up so that you have full range of cyclic and pitch uh, movement with the sticks. Remember I had a FBL set up in my transmitter. Get your heli powered on 
uh, and uh, you'll see that uh, now that you have your servo horns on, everything's going to initialize up. Back into programming mode will move the servos back to the center position so that you can adjust your, your arm lengths as necessary. And uh, basically the challenge here is we can stay in uh, just menu mode and work on this, but eventually it's going to time out and, uh, and reset on us. So I think the default is like 25 seconds. I'm going to bump this all the way up to 250. If you look in the lower right corner of the GT 5.2, you can see the countdown timer of how much time is remaining. So every so often you can go uh, just touch the, uh, the touchpad on the GT and uh, reset that timer. Every time I touch it, it resets it. But if you ignore it while you're working on something else, that timer will just count down. And eventually, if you're not paying attention, it's going to reset on you. And then you'll have to go jump back into menu mode and uh, go back to work. So the next thing we want to do is connect our link rods from the bell cranks to the servo arms. And we want to do that by making sure that the rods, the two pairs for each bell crank, are the same length. So as it turns out, uh, the way it came from the factory, they were all the same length, which made it very handy. The elevator, which is where we want to start because it's easier, was actually the right length from the factory. And you can see... Uh, how that looks. And basically what I'm looking at here is how the two screws for the balls on the bell crank are perfectly straight up and down and I use the main shaft as an alignment aid for that. We want to get as close as we can visually but once we get into the gauge setup we will fine-tune all of this. So the left aileron links were a little bit long so what we want to do is shorten them and whatever we do to one we have to do the other. So I'm going to start with the top and I'm going to rotate a full turn. It has to be a full turn because you want the Thunder Tiger logo facing away from the ball. One full turn, and as it turns out, that was a perfect length for uh, each of these rods. And you can see again how I'm looking at the screws on the bell crank should be straight up and down. And then, as I mentioned before, I'm using the main shaft as an alignment guide uh, visually. Now I'm just going to flip the heli around and do the same thing on the right side. And uh, just like before, uh, the two uh, rods were of equal length. They were just a little bit long. So same thing. Whatever I do to one, I'm going to do the other. And in this case, it looks like it's going to be, let's try one turn. Yep, perfect. Now you get to see what happens when your fly barless system resets while you're working on the heli. Yep, servos reset, things start moving around. Darn it, I let it expire. So I gotta go back into programming mode to get everything back to center and uh, holding for me. It happens. You get busy and it's hard to, uh, to remember to check that. Anyway, back to this. Uh, I've got my uh, two uh, linkage rods on now. And again, taking a look at the bell crank to make sure it's straight up and down. And of course, our link rods are parallel uh, because we use the right holes on the servo ones. All right, so now what we want to do is take a look at our swash plate movement and, uh, and how our servos are moving the system when we move our sticks. So uh, I have a mode 2 transmitter, so my left stick is going to be throttle and pitch. In this case, we're concerned with pitch. Right stick is going to be cyclic, uh, you know, aileron and elevator. But as you can see here, when I move my elevator forward and back, I get more of a pitch type response. And when I move my pitch, I get more of an elevator type response. So something is clearly mixed up. So I went in and to the GT 5.2 swash setup and changed my swash direction, still in the 140 uh, degree swash, changed it from a, a direction of one to a direction of three, which is none of the servos are reversed. Uh, that's different than what's in the manual. The manual calls out a 140 degree swash with a direction of one. Uh, there are actually four directions that you can pick from. Three is the one that worked for me, and I'm assuming that's going to work for most people. But the key is to test it and make sure it's working right. So now as you can see, I'm getting the right response from the swash whenever I move my left and right sticks. But now I can tell that my elevator servo is backwards, because when I push forward, the swash tilts backwards, which is wrong. So what I need to do now is go into my transmitter and reverse that one channel, just the elevator channel. 
All right, things are looking good. I like to look at the heli from the backside whenever I do the final check on the swash movement because the swash movement then should mimic everything that your sticks do because your orientation is aligned up with it. So when I push forward, the swash should tilt forward. When I pull back, swash tilts back. When I pull right, swash goes right. When I push left, swash goes left. Um, all that is just really easy to look at from behind. All right, now we get into the good stuff. We're going to get into setting our uh, zero degree pitch at center stick, our maximum uh, cyclic deflection of eight degrees, and our maximum collective positive and negative of 13 degrees, positive 13 degrees, negative. And for the rest of this, I'm going to use the GT5 tools uh, software using the USB connection to the GT5.2. So this is easily done in the GT5.2 using the touch display. Uh, it's much easier for me to uh, to do with a computer, uh, I'm not going to lie, and it's easier for me to show you kind of uh, what it looks like. So, Okay, so the first thing I want to do is level my swash plate so that when the servos are all at their neutral position, the swash plate is perfectly level. So in order to do that, I'm in the programming software, I'm connected to the GT5. The first thing I want to do is press this center button. And what that's going to do is take all of these servos to the center point. It's the same thing that happens whenever you just enter programming mode uh, on the GT5 using the touchscreen. My preferred heli setup tool is the Soko Kit from Soko Heli Tools. And uh, it comes with a gauge and a helical that we'll use uh, in our blade grips. So I'm not going to go through how to use the Soko Kit. Uh, it's pretty awesome, I'll tell you that and I won't use anything else to set up. But Soko Heli Tools has a great uh, video called RC Helicopter Quick Setup Guide with a Soko Kit and goes through step by step everything I'm doing here. So the first thing I did here was get the main shaft perfectly perpendicular uh, using the gauge and there's a formula and a way to do that uh, that he explains it's really simple. Once you do that then we can work on leveling the swash and basically what I'm going to do is fine tune the sub trims, the same sub trims we were working with earlier, I'm going to fine tune that using the Soko kit to make sure my swash is perfectly level. Then I adjust the links between the swash and the blade grips to get zero pitch at center stick in all positions around the swash. And here's what that looks like once I get that completed. So now that I have that complete, I want to adjust the collective pitch range. I want the maximum and minimums to both be at 13. So to do that, I'm going to deselect the center button so I have full range. And I'm going to push the uh, collective stick, the pitch stick, all the way forward to maximum. Now back into this screen, I'm going to use the collective pitch A setting to adjust that so that I get down to 13 degrees. Once I have that where I want it, now I'm going to pull the stick all the way full negative collective, and then I'm going to go back in and adjust that value with the collective pitch B setting, and that will take care of the negative pitch adjustment. Now I want to adjust the cyclic limits, the overall deflection of the cyclic servos. So click the measure button, which will lock down the collective, and then use this value here to adjust the overall limits, and you want eight degrees uh, on this. So hold down full elevator or full aileron, one side or the other, it doesn't really matter. You wanna generally get them down to eight. It just needs to be an average of eight across the board. So don't worry about being exactly precise. It just needs to be averaging out about eight. I did check all directions to make sure they were close, and they were all pretty close. So the last thing we want to do is uh, do our cyclic limits as it pertains to swash movement. And you want to make sure that you use this value to limit the range of motion of your swash to prevent binding. So go to full maximum and full negative uh, collective, 
and go to the extremes on aileron and elevator and see if you get any binding. I like to listen to servo buzz or you can sometimes see mechanical binding and just get it as high of a number as you can where everything is nice and smooth. And after you do this, you may want to go back and double check your maximum and minimum collective as well as your uh, cyclic deflection, that negative positive 13 and then the eight degrees, just to make sure that that's still dead on. You may have to adjust that a little bit after this step. Uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this. Don't forget to subscribe or check me out on everythingcpo.com. And I will catch you on the next one.